All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back and Happy New Year. Now, just before we broke for the holidays, I had a request come in for a little bit more information about H.323 or maybe some clarification. So I thought we'd start the new year by answering some questions before we get into content for upcoming classes and whatever we feel like talking about as far as networking goes. So without further ado, let's talk a little more H.323. Now to start with, we should probably remember that uh, VoIP has many, many components. And H.323 is just one of them. Now H.323 sort of falls into the category of signaling protocols. So there we normally talk about H.323, we talk about SIP, we talk about uh, SCCP or Skinny, uh, but there are even more uh, signaling protocols. Now every VoIP call eventually winds up sending voice transmissions back and forth and so we use RTP for that, the transport protocol, and then we use RTCP to send us telemetry data about the RTP stream. But of course there are lots and lots of support protocols that go along with that. Uh, you can see on the list we've got Power Over Ethernet, TFTP which for updating the phones or giving uh, phones their configuration, of course DHCP for IP addressing, DNS if we want to tie in there, and then we even did uh, NTP. Now internally, each one of these, well not each one, but a lot of protocols have sub-protocols. So when we talk about SIP, we also talk about SDP in there. And then protocols have types and subtypes and codes and all of that kind of stuff. We can see that in, in protocols like ICMP even. So there's lots and lots of room to grow a protocol or to realize that protocols have lots of things going on other than just what might be indicated by their name. Now HI323 comes to us from the ITUT and we can actually go out and take a look at those standards and we will here in a second. Uh, but it is an umbrella protocol and so it me that means that there are a lot of protocols that are part of H.323 so when you're doing capture or things like that you don't actually see H.323 uh, protocols. You see other protocols that are being used to implement the H.323 H. system. Now H.323 also comes to us from this idea of trying to packetize transmissions over a network and it's sort of the precursor to all of the way that we do things today. So just as a little foreshadowing, here is the H.323 scope. And this is right out of the H.323 standards document. H, uh, and out of it's, uh, the ITUT that we call these recommendations. But as we can see here, we've got on the left all of the different kinds of equipment or terminals or nodes that you might hook up to the system. And then alongside of that, we've got all of these protocols in the middle. Well, we recognize these as codecs here, right? And we could add H.264 to that or uh, MPEG-4. But then we've got all of these other protocols down here that are our support protocols. And we'll see here in a minute that they're used to actually get nodes communicating and then negotiate what you're going to use to transmit the voice and data. And you can see that all of this comes back to H.265. Uh, 225 at least at the beginning and then we've got our network interface whether that's Ethernet and IP version 4 or you're running over wireless it doesn't really matter but let's take a look at some of the standards and some of the captures that we have all right so here is the ITUT site and we can go out here and you can actually download the standards they're free but we go to standardization and we take a look at standards now the H. Dot, I'm sorry, the, the ITUT recommendations are organized by the letter that they begin with. So we take a look at the recommendation. Now within telecom or systems that came from telecom, there's a lot of recommendations that, that are part of this. And obviously we're focusing on just a very, very, very small part of that for today. But you can see we're organized by these letters and if we already mentioned the G series here, so if I was to click here, we would see a lot of the stuff that has to do with uh, the codex, but um, H series codex are also out there. Now the G series, well, we might as well go there. Uh, the categories that we have here have a lot to do with how systems are set up. So the G.700 series, those are the actual audio codecs, but there's a lot that goes into the system that describes 
everything from the voltages and the signaling necessary to get a traditional phone line working all the way on up to packetizing this. But let's go back here. We are interested in the H series today and we want H.323. So we're going to take a look here and this is where we would actually go to pick up this particular standard. But you can see that there are a lot of standards that go along with that. Okay, so that's where you would go to actually get them. You can go out there today uh, and take a look for yourself. You can just download them. And you can also see the history of a particular standard. So the in-force is what we would be looking at. Okay, so that's that. Now I've taken the liberty of popping a few of these open for us. So this is the H.323 standard. And we'll just take a look at one or two sentences from it, right? This recommendation covers uh, the technical requirements for multimedia communications in those situations where the underlying transport is a packet-based network. Now, for us that uh, sort of build networks, it's hard to realize sometimes, but a lot of the way that we do things on packet-based networks and on the internet today all came from telco so there's a, a tremendous amount that we borrowed from the telecommunications standards and HI323 was this whole system that said well listen we've got this telephony system based on signaling system 7 and video conferencing what if we wanted to run that over a packet based network like IP version 4 and so that's what HI323 is all about trying to figure out how to make that happen. Now it's instructive to take a look at all of these other protocols that support this. So the list is actually quite, I think there are 58 standards that go along with this. And you can see that all of these um, are the support protocols that go into H.323. So we'll just scroll down. And we can see, oh my goodness, look at all of these protocols that are part of this. Now we're not going to implement all of these in a particular system, but certainly these are all part of it for a for a particular implementation. So there we have it. So that's that's the long list there. Now a little more foreshadowing, the two biggies for us are going to be H.225 and H.245. And in general, H.225 right here is there for initial registration of endpoints and then to start setting up the call. So we're going to make phone calls, we're going to dial digits, we're going to get the endpoints, we're going to have all the signaling, right, the busy off of dial tone, all of those are going to be established with H.225. We can also do some level of access control with, with H.225. So H.225 is part of almost every single implementation that you'll see out there. I've never seen one without one. And so we can see here that at the beginning, right, before any calls are made, endpoints may discover or register with a gatekeeper. Pretty straightforward. We have to register with a call server. But really, H.225 is part of that whole setup and then establishing connectivity with whoever you're trying to call. Now, another protocol that's important to us is H.245. Now, H.245 may or not be seen clearly in packet capture. That's because some of the messaging that's done with H.245 can be done away with. So H.245 is all about trying to figure out what kind of endpoints, what are the capabilities, uh, what terminal types, uh, who wants to be in charge of the connection, and then negotiating the logical channel parameters. But we don't need all of that very often. And so we can see here that some of the general categories of 245 uh, may or may not be used. And we can see that right here in the very first sentence, right? Might not be applicable in a particular implementation. And then some of the general categories here, master slave determination, right? Uh, one side is going to govern what happens, capability exchange, logical channel signaling procedures, and things like that. All right, so these are big parts of what H.245 is supposed to do. If you were doing security, you might even add 235, but as we saw, there's a lot of lot of protocols that are out there. Okay, so that is sort of what we're gonna expect to see when we start a capture. So let's take a look at some of the captures that we might see on different systems. 
So what we've got here is an Avaya phone startup. So this is an Avaya phone talking to an Avaya call manager, and this is all just about connecting the phone to the call manager. And we can see here that we've got the initial communication and then all of these two four, or 225 messages. They're all really just about uh, getting the phone registered, getting its interface populated and things like that. So this is what we would normally expect to see at the beginning of a conversation. And we can see that this is just the phone on the startup. So a lot of communication between, in this case, 16.1 and, and 16.183, which was the phone, and that's it. Now, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the implementations are also proprietary, so we don't always get very much information when we start opening up the, uh, the particular messages. But we can see, you know, sort of modes that are set up and, and how the system is going to operate for this particular phone. All right. Now, here is this same phone, and all that we're going to do is pick up the handset. That's all that's going on here. So we've got more 225 messages that are going back and forth between the call server and the phone, just indicating, hey, I just picked up the phone. So somehow the phone has got to alert the call server that I picked up the phone and I'm getting ready to dial. And so that's what's going on here. And then the rest of this, all of this stuff right here, is dial tone that's going back and forth from the call server and then the phone might be signaling. So we might be getting a, uh, a an actual digit being dialed, things like that. Now, this is one of the interesting things about an Avaya implementation is that all of that stuff is handled via RTP. Some systems handle that with a message that says, play this particular tone on the phone, rather than sending it across the network. So that's Avaya. Okay, and here is a a polycom capture we see the same sort of behavior we see 225 at the beginning now this one I also included a little bit of what happens when you start to make a phone call but here we've got a couple of endpoints that are talking to each other uh, 112 and 111 111 112 and we can see that they're trying to negotiate back and forth how they actually want to manage this call. And so in this particular case, unlike the Avaya, we see a tremendous amount of 245 uh, communication going back and forth because they're trying to figure out, well, how do you want to do this? Do you have how many buttons? What, what capabilities do you have? What, pro what protocols or, or codecs can you do? So there's lots and lots of messaging that's going back and forth long before they do something called opening the logical channel which is establishing the ports that you're going to use, the codec that you're going to use for the actual transmission of voice over IP packets. And then this drops into RTP again. In this particular case, RTP is actually about the voice traffic and not about signaling back and forth on the polycom nodes. So in this particular case, what we've got is a Cisco implementation for skinny. Now in a skinny implementation, we would expect to see SCCP packets. Now what we've got here is two call servers on opposite ends of a, of a topology. They're connected via T carriers. Now that doesn't really matter for this, but the important point there is that they didn't know that they were two skinny call servers. And so they default to an industry standard protocol, H.323 in this case, rather than trying to do something proprietary like SCCP. So this is actual communication between two routers that are handling SCCP on one side, SCCP on the other side, but they're communicating with each other, call information, destination, things like that, with H.323. And again, we see H.225 is the call setup. You know, what is the destination? What are we looking for? And then we've got the RTP stream. And this right here is the actual voice data. So three different implementations of H.323. Well, I hope that helps, you know, I get, you know, maybe a little bit better picture of H.323. H.323 is enormous, and each one of the standards that we talked about is hundreds of pages long. So what you end up doing is looking at a particular implementation or trying to understand H.323's place in the universe. Remember that it's an umbrella protocol with lots and lots of support protocols. So you're not actually looking for H.323 itself. 
every implementation can be different and we looked at Avaya, Polycom, and Cisco. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if I helped and may those voice packets always reach those voice handsets.